I want to welcome you to the IT Career Toolkit podcast, um, episode 17. Not really sure. You'll see it on there. Um, <clears throat> you may have noticed that I missed Monday's podcast episode, and I apologize for that. Um, I allowed myself to get busy, and that's why we're going to talk about this topic today, about running your calendar and some things you can do. Because um, the fact is, I, I was busy. I had a lot of things going on and ended up running out to meetings early when I would normally be doing my podcast and was speaking at a couple events. Um, but one of the topics I was covering was how to use Google Calendar and some of the tools available and uh, bad on me for not really managing my time properly. As a matter of fact, I realized I hadn't sat down and actually worked my calendar for the last couple of weeks after our move. So, um, so I'm going to show you how I use Google Calendar and this was one of the comments I received at one point. They wanted to know how I use Google Calendar. And so I'm just going to give you a quick overview. Um, when it comes right down to it, you need to manage your schedule and block out time pretty strictly if you want to get as much done as you would like to or get as much done as possible. It's not enough to simply um, allow the day to kind of happen without having starting and ending times for certain projects. Things always can run over and you want to give yourself a little bit of play, but uh, you need to use a calendar to be as effective as possible. Can you hear the cacophony of birds chirping out here? It's amazing actually. Um, but uh, so let's take a look at Google Calendar and see how you might better control your time. Um, I use Google Calendar. Almost any calendar will work. I use Google Calendar primarily because it exists uh, online. I can get to it from any system, and also it integrates with my phone. I, I use the Droid. So you use what calendar is most comfortable for you. But I'll show you um, the same rules could could apply pretty easily to any calendar you use. So the first thing about Google Calendars you want to take a look at is Google Calendars has integrated Google Tasks with their calendar. <clears throat> it's a pretty powerful feature. I'm looking at the calendar with a, a week's worth of time. You can go to a day or view an entire month. And they have the four days and an agenda which just lists things out in a list. So we're going to stay with the week for now. And what I try and do is block out my day. So if you were to look at my other calendar, which actually looks like this, you can see where I've started to block out the day, including the podcast I'm working on. Um, you can also see my partner Frida's calendar is listed on here. We have a morning conversation that happens from time to time. And then you can see other projects I've listed on my calendar. So I'm going to get back to the test calendar or demo calendar. And you can see I've got my calendar here and I've got tasks. I've also got a calendar that Google provides for holidays and if you have a coworker, they can or a partner or somebody you work with they can share their calendar here you can add additional calendars as well but that's for another demonstration but what I try and tell people is to block out your time of course giving a little bit of leeway but here's what I did I went in and said okay CBT that's Career Builder Toolkit or the IT Career Toolkit podcast and I'll say podcast work. So I'm going to create the podcast in that time. And then I might here say that I'm going to MIH Biz is Frida, my partner's business. I'm adding some plugins to her website. It's going to be a pretty short piece of work. And then I'm going to be working on a client project. We'll call it CJM. I might list more about it. Now one of the things I want to show you is when you go into the calendar you can have default reminders. In this case, the default reminder I have set up is email and a pop-up. You can remove or add different reminders. And I don't have the cell phone enabled so I'm going to show you on my other calendar one of the nice features. If I go in and look at the event details, because uh, I have my phone tied to this calendar, and I add a reminder, one of the items I can do is add a SMS reminder, a text message, and it will send that to my phone X amount of minutes prior to the event, or you can have it set weeks or days prior to the event to send you a reminder. This, this is an important feature that can be extremely helpful. I'm going to discard changes, but that's when you enable your phone, and it doesn't have to be a smartphone, any phone, and it will send you a text message if you receive text messages. So that, that's a pretty helpful feature. So let's say I set a reminder for email 10 minutes prior to this event so that I get a, something that you know, goes to my phone or 
comes into my email and lets me know this project's going to be starting. Now, that just shows how I block out the time, and that's how you should block out time. And also, you have to understand that you need to give yourself little bits, windows between major projects. Things will run over, and if you too tightly control your time, don't give yourself drive time or adequate drive time or account for things that could come up, you will end up um, running over your calendar and, and running behind schedule, and it ends up being a catch-up job the entire day. So make sure you're blocking out time with some spacing between. Now I'm going to show you also about adding tasks. And the way, reason I might use a task versus an appointment is, let's say I sent somebody an email and I want to make sure I follow up with them, but I don't want to have this ongoing list on the top of my mind. I, I, I know I can follow up with them next week, per se. And so I'll go forward and I will click up in the top above the, you know, above the main calendar area and now it gives me the option of adding an event, an all-day event, or a task. When I choose task, I can say follow-up, that's what I use the F for, um, follow-up with Jim. And maybe I've sent Jim an email today and I want to make sure by that time he's responded or I get back to him, but I don't want it, I don't want to have that left to me just rem remembering, so I put it on a task. Now it appears in the list there with a little F next to it. I know what that means. It also shows it here on my task list, but I'm less concerned with this list, although we can manage tasks there kind of nicely. I may also, we're looking in a future week, I'll come back to this week. Tomorrow, I want to, at some point, not at a specific time, but when I have an opening time, I want to call uh, Mary. And so I'll just do Mary, and I might put her number in here. So I'll do... And I don't need to put any additional notes, but I could put regarding their Facebook page. And now that task list is on the list. What's nice about tasks, similar to calendars, is let's say it's not going to work out where I can call Mary on that day and it wasn't critical that I had a specific time to call her, but I do want to keep in touch with her. I've now dragged so I can see two weeks and I can go grab Mary's task and I could drag it down to Tuesday of next week and there we go now in this view which I'm looking at two weeks because we were looking at a week or there's a day but if I go to a week if I drag down I'm looking at two weeks which can be helpful for seeing what's coming up and I can on any one of these days for example add another task I'm now clicking on Saturday and say um, get to Home Depot. And I could put sprinklers and rake. I don't know. Whatever we decided we're doing at the Home Depot. And now it's on that list for Saturday. I don't have a specific appointment time, but it's on my task list. I can also add events, of course. And by default, if I just click on a day and I add an event, and let's say we call that event We'll just call that event, uh, you know, meeting with Fred. If I create that event now, it's going to be an all-day event. Okay, so if I look at the day or the week, just the week, it shows up up here, which is not really where I want it. That's a specific point in time. So if I go and edit that event. I, I can then tell it not to make it an all-day event. I can say start at 11 a.m. It gives me an hour of time by default. Let's say it's going to take an hour and a half. And any reminders I want, I'm not going to have any. And I can put the the um, address here, which is helpful because it'll show up on my Droid phone, and I can use it for navigation if I wanted. So I could say 555 Main Street. Ventura, California. I don't know if an actual 555 Main Street exists, so I have no idea what that's going to end up showing us, but when you click on the event, okay. So that'll show up on my phone so I can use it for navigation. And if I have to move it, of course, it allows me to move things up or down, keeping the duration of the event steady, and that will also integrate with my phone. So 
when you just click on a given date, particularly in the calendar view or two week or month view or two week view, it's just going to make it an all day event unless you specify in the details what it is. Whereas if you're looking at a given day or the week time frame, I can go in and use 7.30 to 8.30 as an event and it, it creates the time frame for me. Meeting number one. So that's why I use Google Calendar, and that's how I use it to block out time. Uh, I'd love to get your tips as well, but uh, hopefully you find this helpful. Okay, so that's how I use Google Calendar. Just gives you a brief overview. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them on the podcast or send me an email to info at cbtoolkit.com. That's I-N-F-O at cbtoolkit.com. And let's see if we can better uh, manage our schedule next week, get more done. Thanks.